will not go back home the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Blessings upon your life. Amen. Upliftment in your life. Amen. Renewal in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Power of the word coming upon your life. I will never be the same again. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your people. Thank you because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy, fullness of power, fullness of revival, fullness of blessing, fullness of deliverance and dominion, and fullness of understanding and the knowledge of the Almighty. We're asking, O oh Lord, you open our eyes that will behold great, wonderful, wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. Impact every life and help us, Lord, to be victorious at all times, in all situations. Whatever is happening, we'll be walking on top of the stormy sea in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A good amen. amen. A victorious amen. amen. You'll carry victory home in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at Job and we're reading a few verses of scripture. Job chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and his huge evil, shunned evil, hated evil, and pushed evil away evil character, evil behavior. It shunned everything. And in verse 8, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, please, before we go on, as you look at chapter 1, chapter 2 of Job, you will see that the situation was peculiar. It was long, long time ago before Moses came on the scene and before the covenant, old covenant was made, before the Davidic covenant was made and before the great promises in Isaiah in Ezekiel, in Jeremiah, and in Malachi. Before the coming of John the Baptist, and before the coming of Jesus Christ, and before Calvary, and before he died on the cross, it was before the resurrection of Christ. It was long, long, long before the establishment and the planting of the church. And so you understand the peculiarities you find in Job. Those peculiarities, they are no more here today. Give me a good amen. amen. It says, the sons of God came together and Satan came along. That doesn't happen today. Either on earth or in heaven. When the angels of God gather today and the sons of God gather today in heaven, Satan cannot find a way to get there. How do we say that Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall from heaven. It's no more there. Cannot have any meeting there. Now it's Jesus that is in heaven. And he's went there for us and he's presenting his blood and his sacrifice and he's saying, I died for him. I died for her. 
you cannot be another Job today. Job did not have all these promises we're looking at. He did not have the authority that believers have today. Thank God I have authority. Somebody there said, I have authority. I have authority. Yet, we're going to study and we're going to look at what happened to Job. Why? Because all scripture is given by inspiration. And we read everything. We still read today Leviticus so that we understand what God told the children of Israel not to eat. And he told them, don't eat this, don't eat this. This one is clean unto you. This one is not clean unto you. We still read that. Why? All scripture is given by inspiration. But now, what they were told not to eat, we eat. Why? Because we are not in that dispensation. And today we still read Exodus and Deuteronomy that on the Sabbath day, on the seventh day, you will commit it to the Lord and honor your Lord. You will not gather wood. You will not burn anything or cook. There's even a distance you can walk. We still read that today. Why? All scripture is given by inspiration. But we don't observe that today because we're in a different dispensation and we have a different covenant you see when you read the word you must understand all right that happened then where do i stand today what's the word today and so come now to verse eight with that understanding and the lord said unto satan as thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, none like him in the earth, somebody said, is lower than Job. He is suffering more than Job. Somebody said, his situation in life even though he claims to have been born again and converted, he is worse than Job. Well, Jesus said, of all that were born of women, there is none as great as John the Baptist, which means John was greater than Job. Are you following him? Is that right? Was John the Baptist greater than Job? Tell me now. And then Jesus said, But he that is least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. If you allow me now, please. B is greater than A. And C is greater than B. Then C is greater than A. That means that least in the kingdom of God today is greater than Job. Actually, if I had the chance, if Job were around, I could preach to Job. I can teach Job. I can pray for Job. I can take authority over those things afflicting Job. And whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And today, whatever you are going through, whatever the attack and the oppression, whatever the sickness and the challenge, when I take, and you can do it too, you. you can take the problem to the Lord, but I'm telling you about myself. When I take your problem to the Lord, God will solve your problem. Yeah. And so we understand, yes, there's affliction. 
Yes, there are tasks, and yet there are difficulties. But those difficulties cannot match the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to look at verse 20 now. Look at verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and he fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Praise the Lord. That a man can worship the Lord. That a man does not stay back at home and say, because I'm going through the afflictions of Job, I will not worship. You will worship. There's power in worship. There's breakthrough in worship. There is open door in worship. But look at this now. And he said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. That's right. And naked shall I return thither. Somehow, on one side, that's true. Naked shall I return. What that will mean for me and for you is that I cannot take money away. I cannot take clothes away. I cannot take all the material things away. Naked will I return. But wait a minute. The real me is my soul, my spirit, living in the body. And when I go, I go with salvation. I go with righteousness. I go with holiness. I go with the assurance that promises and rewards are waiting for me when I get to heaven. The angels are waiting for you. And then he said, the Lord gave, that's right, that's right, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Was it the Lord that took away? I said, was it the Lord that took it away? Who took it away? Satan. And then he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. We need to understand whenever we read so that we understand that in his own case, at his own time, his confession and expression was all right for him. Because that was the level of what he knew. Look at verse 22. In all this, Job said not, nor charged God foolishly. Now, it wasn't seen for him because that was his knowledge. That was all he knew. If you say today, that God gave you and God has taken it away. For you now it will be seen because you have more knowledge than that. You have more understanding than that. You can't say that today. God has given me and God has taken away. Blessed be his holy name. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that she may have, tell me, church, life and habit, tell me, more abundantly. He gives us abundant life today. He gives us life. He doesn't take that life away. He gives us abundant life. He doesn't take that abundant life away. He will not take any of your blessings away. With all those passages and the background understanding, we're looking at the word of God today, perseverance in righteousness in spite of adversity. Perseverance in righteousness in spite of adversity. In different eras, different dispensations, Different generations, trials, and adversities do come to all people. 
to saints and sinners alike. But again, I need to remind you, the kind of adversity that comes upon the righteous today is very, very different from the adversity that came upon the people of old. You remember the children of Israel, they had adversity and oppression in Egypt. You don't have that today. Nobody enslaves you today and makes you to be building something, a pyramid for Egypt. It will not happen today. It will not happen to you. I said it will not happen to you. All that happened to the children of Israel in the wilderness, they came to the well and they wanted to drink the water and it was bitter. And because of that, they cried unto the Lord. That kind of affliction does not come today. Your water will not be bitter. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. And then he says, you will have all sicknesses removed out of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, they came to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea was before them. And the Egyptian army behind them. How are we going to pass over? Then stretch the rod and the sea will part. It doesn't happen today. You have the bridge over there now on the sea. And you drive over and you cross over. So you cannot say the affliction I have now is that there is a sea before me. I cannot pass. It doesn't happen today. You want to enter into the city. And there are walls around. And you have to walk around once Every day in six days, that doesn't happen today. If you want to go in now, there is no gate. If you're going to another country, get your visa, get your ticket, and you're through, and you are there in Jesus' name. Come to the New Testament and see the afflictions that happened to those believers in the New Testament. Peter and John just preached and mentioned the name of Jesus. They arrested them and they locked them up in the prison. An angel had to come to release them. God stand, speak that word of life. It doesn't happen today and we're going to preach the gospel. You'll be part of it. Nobody is going to arrest you and put you in jail because you are preaching the gospel, not now in our city here. It will not happen. And Paul and Silas, they cast out an evil spirit in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Because of that, they laid holes on them and put their feet in the stalks, in the prison, in the dungeon. It doesn't happen today. If you cast out an evil spirit, because you know now, there's even the psychiatrists. And the psychiatrists are trying to take those uh, lunacy, the lunacy out of their head. And if you do it by prayer, the people, the relatives will be so grateful to you that you have the name and the power of Jesus and you cast out those devils. You cannot be put in prison today because you cast out devil from a demon-possessed person. I'm telling you that when you look at afflictions in the Bible, you need to understand, can this happen today or will this not happen today as you analyze what happened to them will not happen to you. And whatever happens to you, Thank God you have the victory. And say, thank God you have the victory. Victory will be yours in Jesus' name. At different times and stages in life, in the life of a person, 
different kinds of perplexing problems that we don't understand may come to the same person. Some people thrive and rise with the winds of adversity, while others fail and fall under the harshness of tough times. But from the knowledge of the word of God today, knowledge is power. I said knowledge is power. You rise above all those problems in Jesus' name. Those who are crushed by the hammer of adversity, they give up all righteousness, some of them, and they give in to the works of the devil and the will of the enemy. But those who grow, those who progress, they turn adversity to advance. You will advance. They are fortified and they are strengthened by more righteousness, by having more righteousness, having more consecration, having more love for God, more faith, fruitfulness, and faithfulness to God. Perseverance in righteousness in spite of adversity. I'll persevere. I said I will persevere and I will stand. I'm not hearing your voice. You will stand in of righteousness during trials. It's possible that even when there are trials, even when there are troubles, even when there are challenges, you can practice and progress in righteousness. You will in Jesus' name. Number two, the power to preserve righteousness at all times. At all times. The power to preserve righteousness at all times. In the day, in the night, at the crossroads, when there are challenges, when there are mountains before you, there's a power that you will preserve righteousness at all times. Number three, the promise and the privileges for the righteous from the throne. From the throne of God today, there is the promise, there are the privileges for the righteous. They will come upon your life. Did somebody shout amen? amen? Point number one, the possibility and the practice of righteousness during trial. Even though there are trials, challenges, difficulties, and even though you don't understand, like Job did not understand, you will remain righteous. I will remain righteous. Look at Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14. Ezekiel 14, verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, says the Lord God. It talks of Noah, talks of Daniel, and talks of Job. And it says, when difficulty or when problem comes upon a community, if men like Noah, like Daniel, like Job, if they were in the land, they would deliver themselves by their own righteousness. You know the meaning of that? If Job were to live at this time, if Noah were to live at this time, if Daniel were to live at this time, 
and calamity and plague breaks out, it will not touch Noah. It will not touch Daniel. It will not touch Job. They will deliver themselves from the afflictions that could come today. Look at verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. That's just saying uh, that deliverance is not transferable. Health is not transferable. Protection is not transferable. But if you are righteous today, it says, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. There's difficulty, there is challenge, but thank God you'll be delivered. Look at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. And I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. Joseph had challenges, difficulties. Joseph had adversity. And you know the story of uh, Joseph, but the Lord allowed that to fulfill the dream he had. And I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. Joseph had challenges, difficulties. Joseph had adversity. And you know the story of uh, Joseph, but the Lord allowed that to fulfill the dream he had given to Joseph. Whatever happens to you will lead you to fulfill the dream he has for you in Jesus' name. The pity is some people don't have any dream. I have a dream. I said I have a dream. You must have a dream that God has given you. And whatever happens in your life, adversity, it will not cancel the dream. Look at chapter 39, verse 8. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has into my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither has he kept anything back from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? The man will not sin. I will not sin. I said, you will not see. He didn't use the adversity and the problem and sold into slavery. And over here, this is the job I've got now. And I've got favor from Potiphar. And the wife of Potiphar is saying, let's do this. I'm the one asking you. And daddy will not know. Master will not know. My husband will not know. And Joseph said, I may be in affliction. I may be in captivity. I may not understand what is happening, but I will not sin. You will not sin. And promotion will come. Your healing will come. Your deliverance will come. Look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. 19, and I'm reading from verse 51, Psalm 119, verse 51. It is possible 
to keep on practicing righteousness even when there is a challenge of adversity. Look at verse 51. The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. They ridicule me, they make jest of me, they look down on me, they deride me. But all the same, it says, I have not declined from your word. Look at verse 61. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. Look at verse 69. In verse 69, the proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Verse 83, I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. Look at verse 87. They have almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Verse 95. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. Look at verse 109. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. Look at verse 112. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. You see that? Those people of old, whatever came upon them in their own generation, they said all the same, I'm going to surprise the devil. I'll keep on serving the Lord. All the same, I'm going to surprise all who are thinking, I will abandon salvation, I'll abandon righteousness, I will abandon sanctification, I'll abandon holiness, I will abandon the way of the Lord. I will surprise them. I'll be stronger in righteousness. I'll be stronger in holiness. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. And let's come to Matthew chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 22. Matthew chapter 10. We're reading from verse 22. You will stand. You will not collapse. You will not be crushed. You will not uh, crumble under persecution or affliction in Jesus' name. Look at ye, chapter 10 of Matthew, verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. I will endure. I will endure, will endure to the end in Jesus' name. The righteousness of the true believer is not a superficial, detachable attachment. What does that mean? You see, there are people, they have attachment, and that attachment is detachable. They can remove it. They can throw it away. Righteousness is not like that. Our righteousness comes from Christ. It's implanted in our spirit. It is embedded in our soul. And that righteousness is not detachable. It's not like whitewash on a wall. That when a vehement rain comes upon that wall, all the whitewash is washed away. Our righteousness is not like that. Christ's indelible righteousness is implanted in the heart. And the character is transformed. The new creature is made conformable unto the life of Christ. And 
the heavenly minded one loves the Lord because the love of God is shed abroad in his heart. Whatever the challenge and whatever the difficulty, your righteousness will remain, your righteousness will abide. Point number two, the power to preserve righteousness at all times. The power to preserve righteousness at all times. Whatever may happen, whatever may come upon you, remember, God will preserve you in righteousness. He will not allow your righteousness to be taken away in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 20. In Genesis chapter 20, I'm reading here from verse 6. Genesis chapter 20, verse 6. And the Lord said unto him in a dream, Yea. I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart. Look at this. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. I withheld thee from sinning against me. You're serving the Lord. You're born again. You're righteous. And you have been crucified with Christ. And then you find yourself in a corner. And the devil is saying, I caught you now. No, he cannot catch you. I said he cannot catch you. That wicked one touches him not. This time, I will make you to backslide. Not possible. Satan cannot force you to backslide. If anybody backslides, he did it of his own free volition. I also, I have kept you from sinning against me. Wherefore, I suffered thee not to touch her. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will stand by you. And when that Satan comes like a mighty flood, the Spirit of God will raise up his standard against you. And no temptation that is higher, greater than your strength will come upon you. But you know what? There are people, when they have affliction, they have a situation where Satan puts them in a dungeon. They turn their face into the darkness. And meanwhile, Jesus said, I've set an open door before you. And what I open, nobody can shut. And what I shut, nobody can open. But they don't turn around to look at the open door so they can escape because there is no temptation, there's no trial, there's no affliction, there's no adversity that comes upon you greater than what you can bear. But God also will make a way for you to escape. I will escape. I have escaped. God opens the door and he makes you escape. And the Lord Jesus is praying for you. Look at Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 74. Luke chapter 1, verse 74. And that he will grant unto us that we have been delivered out of the hands of of our enemies might serve him without fear. Delivered from all our enemies, small ones, big ones, new ones, old ones, 
powerful wars and pretending wars. All the enemies, those who are fake and those who are real, he will deliver us. Because he wants to keep us in righteousness. Look at verse 75. It says that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him. How long? I said how long? The enemies are crushed all the days of our life. They are limited all the days of our life. I'm not going to travel back from Calvary and go far and far and far to the time of Job. The Lord has closed the door against that era, against that time. We're not even at Calvary now. Let me show you where we are now. The Lord has lifted you up. The Lord has promoted you. You will not come down in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2. I want to read verse 6, but I'm coming back to chapter 1 verse 3. Chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, tell me, with all spiritual blessings in the heart, in the house of Job. Where? In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. We're not living there anymore. We're not in the dungeon anymore. When you creatures us in Christ and he has lifted us up into the heavenly places and he has given us all spiritual blessings. Now come to chapter 2, verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together. Where? In the house of Job. In the tent of Job, where are you now? In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Look at chapter 3, chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 20. Now, not then, not at that time, now. Somebody shout now. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power what does it work? that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end Amen. chapter 4 we're looking at chapter 4, and I'm reading here from verse 8. Chapter 4, verse 8. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he has led captivity captive, and he has given us gifts, all the gifts. I will remain in righteousness by those gifts. Chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 30. Chapter 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body. We're no more an isolated sufferer somewhere in our houses. We're no more an isolated captive somewhere. We are now members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. You're free. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm reading here from verse 11. Put on. 
the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can we overcome? Will you overcome? Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day, and haven't done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about what truth, and having on the breastplate of, tell me, the breastplate of righteousness, what does that mean? Paul the Apostle is making use of the illustration of the Roman soldiers. They would have a breastplate attached to their breast, so that to their chest, so that if the enemy throws any dart on them, it will strike the breastplate, it will crumble to pieces, it will not get to their heart. Trouble will not get to your heart. Trials will not get to your soul. The breastplate of righteousness. And then in verse 15, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel. Above all, above all, above all, what do you take? Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able, ye, who is that? Ye, I said, who is that? In the night and in the day. Whatever arrow of the devil comes, even if you don't have the pastor there, you take the shield of faith, and you say, Satan, see this one. Throw it at that. And a shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the element of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You are free. Righteousness will continue. The Lord has both creative power and redemptive power. Christ came to save us from all sin. And Christ saves to the uttermost. His atonement is not only to forgive our sins and thereafter leave us to go on sinning. He sets free from sin. He breaks the power of sin. He gives us hatred for sin and love for righteousness. And righteousness, a broken relationship with God, hope of heaven, pure conscience, void of offense toward God and toward men become the most precious possession that we have. Property, not up to righteousness, money, not up to righteousness, earthly possession, not up to righteousness, persecution, adversity, whatever trial, whatever relationship, they cannot compete with the righteousness we have, and that righteousness will keep you in the day of trouble. Point number three now, the promise and privileges for the righteous from the throne. The promise and the privileges for the righteous from the throne. You understand, when Job had the problem, his friends came. And none of those friends, we cannot blame them. They did not have the privilege we have and the promise we have. Three of them came. They sat down with him. They didn't have the promise. If two or three gather together in my name, I 
will be in the midst of them. Did you know that? And if two of you, three of you shall agree as touching anything that you ask, I will give it to you. Did each have that? I give you my name, and whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do. They didn't know that. And if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will speak to this mountain in the life of Job, and it will vanish away. You will have what you say. They didn't have that. They didn't understand. It is finished. All the powers of Satan, all the adversities of Satan, finished in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. They didn't know that. They were there for argument. They were there for supposition. They were there for, I think, Job, you're a sinner. I think, Job, you're not as righteous as you thought. I think, Job, there's a problem somewhere. Your children might have disobeyed God. That's why this is happening. And then Job will reply them, you miserable counselors. And what you are telling me, I don't accept. If you were in this position, I would have comforted you. Get away from me. If you cannot comfort me, then stop talking. It was back and forth until when God saw they were not making an headway, God himself came. And now God has come. His name is Emmanuel. God with us. Now Christ has come. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come in. The Savior will come in. The Deliverer will come in. The Healer will come in. The King of Kings will come in. They didn't know that. But eventually, God came. God has come. In your situation, God has come. In your perplexity, God has come. What has he come to do? To sympathize with you? Uh -uh. To cry with you? Uh -uh. To accuse you? Uh -uh. To deliver you? To set you free? To give you something that you are not even asking? Job was not even praying. He was only complaining. Look at Job chapter 42. Then Job answered and said, I know that thou canst do everything. That's good, Job. Now you are waking up. Now you realize, now the light is coming. The light will come to you. And that no thought can be withholding from thee. That's right. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore, have I altered that I understood not. God, don't take me serious, God. Don't take me up on all those things I said, because all those things I said, God has given, God has taken away. I didn't understand. I was perplexed. All those things I said, shall we receive good from the hand of the Lord and not receive evil? God, don't take me too serious on that. I don't even believe myself now. I altered that. I understood not things too wonderful for me which I knew not here I beseech thee and I will speak I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now mine eye sees thee you will see your redeemer you will see your healer you will see your deliverer. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Just short prayer now. And everything cleared away. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz, 
the Terminite, the philosopher, the one who is arguing, the one who is saying, God has done this, you are not perfect. Has this ever happened to a perfect man? God now spoke to him. He said, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the things that is right. The same things that were in isolation, they were right. In application to Job, they were not right. As my servant has. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job. Was Job a servant of Satan? Was Job a servant of man? Whose servant was Job? With all those things that happened, with all those things that he said, because he said them in ignorance, because of the time in which he lived, God said, it's my servant, and Job shall pray for you. Job shall pray for you. Job shall pray for you. Give me a good amen. amen. You know, some people, they don't understand the Bible. If, um, you know, maybe a local pastor is having a little challenge and you don't understand what the local pastor should have, uh, this kind of challenge, they don't understand why anything like this should happen to somebody they call a righteous man. If they have any problem, uh, they'll say, I would have taken this problem to pastor so-and-so, our pastor. But, you know, He's having a great challenge himself. Have you heard? Did you know that this, our local pastor, is having this challenge and this challenge? And now, we don't even want to bother him or trouble him because if he prays, nothing will happen. Because look at his own body and look at his own life and look at his own family and look at what is happening. He don't understand God. Job will pray for these friends and God will answer. Your pastor, I mean your local pastor, will pray for this mountain and that mountain will move away. And of course I, thank God I don't have any problem. I said thank God I don't have any problem. Who has a problem? Satan. I said who has a problem? Satan. Thank God you don't have any problem. Yeah. Who has problem? Yeah. When you pray, God will answer. Yeah. When I pray, God will answer. Yeah. That mountain will move out of your life. Yeah. That adversity will clear off today. Yeah. Look at verse uh, look, look at uh, verse 9. So, in life as the Temanite and build that the Shuhite, and so far the near Masite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job, favored, honored, special, mountain mover, problem solver. The Lord accepted Job, and the Lord, tell me, and the Lord shouted. Job did not even bother to pray for himself. He prayed for his friends, and God answered the prayer over his friends. And now God turned the captivity of Job. is now your turn. He'll turn your captivity. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job, tell me, tell me, tell me out aloud, twice as much as he had before. Multiplication in your life. Greater blessing upon your life. 
total deliverance upon your life. Then came there unto him all his brethren, the gossiping brethren, the criticizing brethren, the complaining brethren, the condemning brethren that had gone away a long time, got them, brought them back. 